Hey, good morning, y'all. Thank you uh, again for, for tuning in on another Sunday. Uh, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there um, and hope you uh, feel honored and blessed today. I, I hope you enjoy the day with your families. Um, I want to I want to say uh, I've had a lot of questions about where's Cody? What's Cody doing? Why hasn't he been playing? Uh, don't worry, Cody's all right. He is finishing up school, and so hopefully he'll be back with us uh, soon he wanted to get his semester finished up online and focus on getting uh, everything taken care of for the spring semester so he should be back soon so so just want to calm everybody down a little bit but uh, again we want to thank y'all for for watching these videos and, and worshiping with us at home and uh, just again want to remind us that that this isn't a time to to just watch a show we're, we're, we're not just sitting back spectating but we want you to participate sing with us praise the Lord with us this morning let's pray Lord Jesus, we again thank you for the opportunity to worship you in a different way this morning. God, we just, we pray that you would bless this time. God, I pray that you would bless all those who are viewing this. Lord, would you just fill um, their hearts with your Holy Spirit. Draw them near to you, God. Open our minds and our hearts this morning, God, to focus on you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen.
want to thank y'all so much for worshiping with us today and just joining us each and every week and um, again as as we do each each Sunday we want to focus this time to um, to bring our 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 worship of, of offerings and ties to the Lord and you can do that in a couple of different ways um, you can Go to our, our website, tophandcowboychurch.org, and click the giving button, and you can give online that way through PushPay. Um, another way you can do that is uh, 
the old-fashioned way, if you want to call it that way, is, is actually take this time to, to write out your check and put it in the mail and send it to P.O. Box 428 Valley Mills, Texas, 76689. And I just want to say I, I'm so thankful for our church family that, that has continued to support this ministry through some crazy times. And, and I just want to say thank you all. For, for being obedient in that way and to worship the Lord in that way. Um, it has been incredibly encouraging uh, for me personally to, to see the support that, that people have continually uh, given to this ministry. And so we want to we wanna take this time to pray, and we ask that you pray where you're at. And just, um, again, focus your heart on the Lord right now. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. God, we thank you that you are faithful, that you are sovereign, and that you are good. God, that there's no situation that, that can overrule you, that there is no circumstance that you don't understand and don't already know about, God, and, and aren't sovereign over. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are a good God. God, we thank you that you're in control. And God, as we just bring our offerings to you, God, as we just bring back to you a portion of all that you've blessed us with, God, would you multiply it? God, would you use it to further the gospel, to, to, to further your work through this ministry, God, to, to take your word to the communities around us, God. We're thankful for what you're doing. God, give us wisdom and direction to continue to do your work. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
This word is from Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Righteousness is my righteousness. 
sustain us. Lord Jesus, you are everything that we need. You give each breath in our lungs, God. You are the creator and sustainer of our faith. God, we pray in these times you would continue to sustain our faith. God, that you would continue to pull us near to you and to give us peace as we read in that verse. God, as we Keep our minds and hearts steadfast on you. Lord, I pray that you would bless the word as Greg preaches it this morning. Would your Holy Spirit just fill him and speak powerfully through him to draw us near to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We're glad that you've joined us. What a great, great opportunity to... uh, worship with you today so thankful for our band and uh, we're going to kick off a new sermon series called helping hands and so over the next couple of weeks we're going to talk about helping hands and the different opportunities that we're going to have to serve the lord and to serve other people and today we're going to be in mark chapter 2 we're going to look at verses 1 through 12 and i i want us to pray together and ask the lord to use this time that he might speak to our hearts so that we can know how to utilize our hands. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much for what you're doing in and through this time. Father, I pray that through your word you would speak to our hearts, that, Lord, through this sermon series, that you would help us to know that you've blessed us with our hands and the opportunity to serve you and to serve those around us, Father. Lord, we're excited to hear what you're going to do through this sermon series, and I just ask your blessing over all that would hear this message today, that we might be found faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, as I said, I hope you have your Bibles. You can turn in Mark chapter 2. I'm going to be reading the first 12 verses here. This is a great story of friends that have faith to take their friend to see Jesus. And then we're going to see what all unfolds in this story. But Mark chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, says, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. 
They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some of the men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat to the man, then lowered the mat and the man that he was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of all of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Now as we get into this this story, this message, I, I want you to take just a moment. I want you to think for a moment of all that your hands can do. As I said, this sermon series over this next four weeks is going to be on helping hands. And, and you know, our hands, God was so creative. I mean, five fingers and, and the way that we can touch things and grasp things, the way we can squeeze things, the way that we can use our hands to direct people. Our hands are powerful, and I want us to see over the next several weeks how utilizing our hands can make the difference in other people's lives. You know, as we look at the first couple of verses here, I, I find it very interesting. It's believed that this was possibly Peter's house. Now, let me go back and read verses 1 and 2. It says, A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. I, I don't know if you've ever been to a house that was so crowded that people were just squeezed inside. Now, I know right now everything that's going on, we're supposed to be keeping our distance, but I want you to think about a time when you've been in a room, when you've been in a place that's been so crowded that people were standing outside trying to hear what was going on inside that room. So if you can imagine what's taking place here in this home, that Jesus is preaching the word, that people have crowded into the house. It's so tight that people are standing outside leaning in. So I want to ask you today, lean into this message. I want you to, to right now, just take a moment, look at your hands and imagine what your hands are capable of doing for the kingdom of God. Verse 3 says this, Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. You know, I want us to think about what it means to work together. What, what, what does it mean to work together to serve someone else? So, so here we have, I believe, a desperate situation. I, I believe these friends, these men saw and knew and had heard of Jesus. Maybe they had heard Jesus preach before, but, but they knew that they needed to get their friend, this paralyzed man, man, into the presence of Jesus. And so when they got to the home and they realized there's no way to get in, often in these homes, 
there was actually a staircase. There was a way to get on top of the roof. And so the men literally carried him up to the top of the roof. And then they took their hands, working together, they dug a hole. Now, now think about this. They lowered the man through the roof. So they didn't dig just a little hole. I'll tell you right now, Casey has me digging holes to plant rose bushes around our house since we're kind of laying low and at the house right now. So I'm out there, you know, if you've ever dug a hole, I'm just out there with my post hole diggers digging and squeezing and picking up rock and moving dirt. And we're using our hands so that hopefully in weeks to come we'll have a pretty yard. But I thought about these men as what it might take them to actually pull the the the, the roofing back, and, and the roofing really here is branches. It's, it's layers of, of clay and dirt that are on there. But they had to make a hole big enough for a man on a mat to be lowered down. Now, now that's not any small effort. And so I want us to look and, and, and learn from this lesson that there was work involved. There were people utilizing their hands for a friend that needed to come to the presence of Jesus. And, and, and so I, I asked this question, how desperate are we to meet the needs of others? How desperate, how, how willing are we to go so that someone that we care for can come to know Jesus better? So tonight, I, I, I say to you this morning as you're hearing this message, I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I desperate enough that others would come to know Jesus through the way that I use my hands? Do I care about those around me? Do I care about my family? Do, am I concerned for those that I work with? Am I concerned for my community in such a way that I'm willing to pull back the clay, the dirt on a roof to lower my friend down into the presence of Jesus? Verse 5 here says this, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, I want us to look at this because it doesn't say when Jesus saw his faith. It says when Jesus saw their faith. So I'm telling you, I'm telling myself that we must realize it's our faith together, our working together with our hands, our coming together to serve the Lord it's the faith in Jesus that changes everything. See, they had faith to get this man into the presence of Jesus. Faith in Jesus changes everything for you and I. Jesus then meets our deepest need. You may ask yourself, well, well Brother Greg, what's our deepest need? Well, what's my deepest need? I believe that our deepest need is forgiveness. God's Word tells us that we are totally separated from God without the hope of Jesus Christ that indwells within us through the Holy Spirit, without coming to Him and confessing that we are lost, that we are in need of Jesus Christ in our life, that He is God's one and only Son that died for us, that rose again on the third day. You and I, our greatest need is not our health. Our greatest need is not the roof over our head. Our greatest need is not a job, even though right now all of those things are consuming our minds and consuming our energy. Our greatest need is forgiveness from our Lord and Savior. So I want to ask you today, have you asked for forgiveness of your sin? See, that's our greatest need, is to come to know Jesus personally as our Lord and Savior. And when we do, our faith in Jesus changes everything about our life. People see within us the change. See, Jesus says to them, Son, your sins are forgiven. And He says this because of their faith. Now, following through the rest of the story, 
we have the religious leaders, we have those that think they know so much, begin in their heart and whispering to each other. Now remember, this is a crowded house. There are people standing out, possibly looking in the windows, looking in the doorway. There are people all over the place, and you know what it's like. You've been in a crowded place when you see somebody begin to lean into somebody else and begin to whisper. Jesus didn't need to hear their whisper because he knew what was in their heart. And he says, now some of the teachers, verse 6, of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Others will always talk when they don't know Jesus. See, people will talk about you. People will talk about the things you do and you don't do. But they don't talk about Jesus. I tell you, let people talk. Our responsibility is to show others, those around us, who Jesus is in our lives by the way that we live. So I want to encourage you, you're going to have people in your world, you're going to have people at your workplace, you're going to have people that you come in contact with that will talk about you, that will talk about the things you are doing and you aren't doing. Right here, the, the law, the, the teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, so Jesus knew, because he's all-knowing, what they were saying. So I want us to look at Jesus' response to them in verses 8 through 11 here. He says, Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know what the Son of Man has authority, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to them, and he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. So I want us to see in, in this place, we, we have evidence here of, of Jesus talking about his deity, that he is the Son of Man. Now, the miracles that Jesus performed showed that he was God's son. Jesus, in this moment, it doesn't even say that Jesus went and touched him. Jesus spoke, and the man got up, took his mat, and walked away. So we need to know that Jesus speaking to us changes our life. Jesus changes our hearts when we tune in when we listen to him and he speaks to us and then we rise and we go about doing what he's called us to do. That's one of the reasons, not only because of the friends using their hands to dig a hole to take their paralyzed friend to Jesus, they use their hands. Jesus then tells the healed paralyzed man to get up, take your mat and go. He's telling him to physically go and what you and I need to realize is that Jesus here in this passage is showing the, the teachers of the law that he was God's son. And he was here on this earth so that you and I might have eternal life. He, he was following exactly what his father had called him to do. This morning, I, I want to ask you, are, are you doing what Jesus has called you to do? Has Jesus right now asked you to go check on a neighbor? Has Jesus asked you right now, go, go work with your neighbor, build that fence, use your hand? Has, has Jesus said, you can, you can prepare something, you can take somebody some food, you can go work at the food bank? There, there's those that are working on the front lines right now that, that are called, that, 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 that have been prepared for months, years even, to take care of loved ones that are on the front line right now. What can we do for them? We can put our hands together in prayer. We, we can applaud them as we see them. You know, I, I love the scene as my dad was being wheeled out of the hospital and all the workers there were applauding that he was getting to go home. And, 
You know, that's one of the things that we do with our hands when we applaud. We're showing our appreciation, but we're using our hands to, to bring joy and happiness to those around us. I think in this passage, the hands that were being utilized here were showing the care that they had for their friend. Now, in verse 12 here, it says this. He said, the man, he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of all of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. When we use our hands to serve Jesus and others, praise breaks out. People see when we are serving Jesus People know when we come to help them the kind of spirit and attitude that we're bringing when we come to help them. Each of us can be used by Jesus to help others draw closer to him. So our challenge in this passage, Mark 2, 1 through 12, is to see not only what Jesus does in healing and forgiving the man's sins, but to see the faith of the friends. And then Jesus saw their faith. Jesus sees your faith. And so today I'm asking, how does Jesus see your faith? Is your faith the kind of faith that lends itself to be a helping hand? Does it, is it the kind of faith that will go next door and check on somebody? Is it the kind of faith that will pull over and help somebody change a, a flat tire? Well, how are you using your hands? I want you to imagine the scene for a moment. So I'm going to go back through this entire story. And, and, and remember, it's, it's believed that this is possibly Peter's home. So think about that for a second through the life of Peter. Don't you know that he remembers the day that men came and pulled his roof apart to lower a friend to be healed in the presence of Jesus I want you to imagine this scene for a moment that when people left that day changed by what they had experienced. See, I, I think that there was probably later, not recorded, this is just my thinking that something funny may have happened at some point because of who Peter is throughout our biblical story. I can imagine that Peter, maybe when they were walking one day, just said, Jesus, I, I, I was just blown away the day that those men got up there and, and dug a hole in the roof and lowered that man on a mat down to you. Lord, that, that, I couldn't imagine somebody would be willing to go to those lengths to bring somebody into your presence. Peter is someone that we can learn so much about. And I think even in this story in Mark chapter 2, we can learn about the faith of one another and what it means to work together, what it means to come together and serve the Lord. And so I want you to think about this story. I want you to think about ways in which you can work with others to bring, bring people into the presence of Jesus. And you say, well, Greg, we, we can't even get to church right now. Well, maybe you can share the link to the message Maybe you can encourage someone to turn on Air One. Uh, maybe you can encourage somebody to, to, to open up God's Word. Maybe you can share the link to Right Now Media to where they can start having their own devotionals and their own quiet time in their own home. There are ways for us to use our hands, and I pray that over the next several weeks that as we see stories like this, it's because of God's love for us that we want to serve him. And that, that means that if we're serving him, it means that we're serving others. Today, you can be forgiven of your sins just like this man was. And maybe you don't have a friend that's lowering you through the roof, but you can come right now, right where you are, right where you're seated, maybe on your couch, maybe at your kitchen table, maybe you're in an office somewhere looking on a laptop, but right there, right now where you are, you can ask Jesus to forgive you. See, because we are separated from God without the forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers us. So I want to ask you right now, have you asked Jesus for forgiveness? Have you admitted that you're lost, that you're a sinner? 
And now that you believe that he is the Son of God, that you've invited him into your heart, and he comes in now, and he gives you life abundantly, could you imagine living a life that people say, man, I, I used to know that person years ago. Something's changed. Jesus has changed that individual. You can be the person that's changed by Jesus, but you have to make that decision. You have to make a choice to confess your sin, to invite him into your life, to believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and commit your life to him. So I want to encourage you today. I want to read the end of verse 12 one more time. It says, This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Oh, that there would be people in our community. Maybe there would be people in our own family. Maybe there would be people at work that would say, I've never seen anybody's life changed the way that this person's life changed after they invited Jesus into their life. Maybe you're going to be that person that people are praising God, that people are applauding, that people are, are, are worshiping God because you have come and you have now made that commitment to use your hands to be the hands of Christ so that others can come to know him because of the life that you live. I want to pray for you today. I want to ask you, are you sure about your salvation? Do you know in your heart that that is exactly where Jesus is? Have you taken time to invite him into your life? You know, I know over the last couple of weeks, even months now, it's been difficult. It hasn't been easy. It's been challenging, but I'm so encouraged by the stories that I'm hearing and the messages that I'm getting that people are spending more time in God's Word, that, that, that people are looking for places to serve and to help others, to use their hands. And that's actually what, what God, I think, urged me to use this sermon series, Helping Hands, because I believe we can use our hands to help those around us. I want to pray for you this morning. The band's going to come back up and, and play in just a moment. We're going to have a time for you to commit yourself to the Lord. And, and I pray that right where you are, that you would just humble your heart, that you would spend time and be still and allow God to speak to you. Let's pray this morning. Father God, I thank you so much for the way that your word encourages us and speaks to us. Lord, I, I thank you that there are friends that are willing to go the extra mile for one another. They're willing to dig a hole through a roof if that's what needs to be done. Lord, I'm thankful for friends that are willing to go the extra mile, the third and fourth mile, so that others can come to know you as Lord and Savior. And Father, I want to pray right now for those individuals that are looking for you, that are seeking answers for their life. Lord, I pray right now that your Spirit would speak into their heart, Lord, that they would give their life to you, that they would commit themselves to you, Lord, that they would realize that they're lost and dying, going to hell without a personal relationship with you, Father. Lord, we give you thanks. We glorify your name, Lord. Father, we're so grateful for the way that you're working, even in these days, Father, of confusion for many. So many people feel hopeless, but Father, you're our hope. Our trust is in you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
and it's good to know we have a firm foundation on Christ. Thank y'all so much for worshiping with us this morning. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me together. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. In the eye of the storm 